Hi, welcome to another video. And in this video, we're covering about gas server mode uh, of the split split inlet. A couple of questions we'll be going through, including what is gas server mode, how to activate the gas server mode, should it always be activated, and what time and what flow rate should we turn on the gas server mode. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Peter Tran, an engineer from Watson ECA. Our job for the past 35 years has been transforming your typical GC analyzer to a turnkey uh, analyzer to perform the analysis of your custom sample. Uh, do check out our website at watson-ac.com and subscribe to my channel to find out more detail about us. All right, so let's get into this video. In this video, we'll be answering the first two questions and a couple of other videos, we'll be answering the rest of the questions uh, that listed over here. All right, so let's uh, jump right into what is gas server mode. I think the name already tell you that it's a way for you to, to save gas, especially when helium is running out very, very quick and getting a lot more expensive right now. All right, so Agilon does provide uh, a way for you to save gas uh, for the split split in less, but uh, believe me or not, every time you want to save something, you really do want to understand what it is, you know, for you to save it correctly. And uh, because I have seen most of the cases, uh, a lot of price, a lot of things you have to pay back if you don't use it correctly. Right, so that's why I make this video for, to explain everything for you about gas and what. Right? So uh, let's first show, uh, let, 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 let me show you firstly about this one. So this is like a, a, a basically how would I say like a, like a schematic of uh, the split split inlet where you have the inlet over here and you have the EPC on top here. But by the way, this picture I took from the advanced operation manual from Adrian. And you can find them in your, I think, in your, your, your PC when we insert the software. You should have this. All right, so what I want to show you over here is wherever you supply, uh, what kind of, wherever carry gas over here, when you supply inside, we have, we call it total flow. As long as you bring a total flow on the way to the inlet over here, the total flow will be split into three different flows. One is a septum flow, which is a very typical that you have seen. The second is a split flow over here. And then the third one is column flow, right? So again, total flow is a combination of three flows, septum flow rate, split flow rate, and a column flow rate. So keep that in mind so that we uh, walk you through all the calculations so that you understand what gas silver mode, right? Okay, so let me show you the, uh, this first slide. It is a typical uh, uh, screen for when you come to set up uh, your, your inlet uh, parameters, right? And then, so, uh, the first thing I want to let you know is the split, split ratio is defined at the split flow divided by the column flow. So in this case, you see split, split ratio is set at 100 over here. So that basically means that split flow is 500 over here. And the column flow, which I don't show you over here, but I set the column flow as 5 mil per minute. So that's basically uh, 500 divided by 5. So that means my split ratio is, is 100. And because they are all dependent to each other like this, you change the split ratio, the split flow will follow accordingly. Or you change the split flow over here, the split ratio will change accordingly, right? All right, so when it comes to total flow, again, I told you just now, total flow is a combination of septum flow plus the split flow plus the column flow, right? So uh, so if you don't use a gas server mode, let's let me get this gas server mode off of a GH gas server mode over here. And let's assume that it's off right now. So you have a septum flow, it's about three mil per minute over here that you can see. This is a very typical flow rate we'll be using for split, uh, for septum flow. So uh, this is will be constant at three. Column flow in this case, we are using five. Again, and the split flow is 500. So that's me in total, we'll be consuming about 508 mil per minute of carrier gas, helium, nitrogen, argon, whatever. Right, so 500 mil per minute, 500, 508 mil per minute of the carrier gas is consumed every single minute if you turn off the gas server mode, right? So if you turn on the gas server mode, what happens is down, down here you have the option to turn on gas server mode. Uh, by the way, this will answer the second question is how to activate uh, the gas server mode. So it's very simple. You need to check the box over here, turn on and off over here. If you check it. The box you will turn it on and you uncheck the box you will turn it off so that's a very simple question to answer right okay so when you turn it on you have the option to have the flow rate setting and the timing uh, i will explain about this too uh, very detailed in the couple of 
uh, next minutes or next video or something like that. But what I want you to, 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 to show you is uh, the flow rate that you see over here, that will replace the flow rate on top here. So gas saver flow rate, we replace a split flow rate when it's come to the gas saver mode, it's on, right? So whenever you turn on a gas saver mode, this flow rate will jump right on top here, right? So why is this so important? Because I have seen so many confusion that uh, people always think that when you turn on a gas saver mode, this is a total flow rate. No, it's not. This is not the total flow rate that you are seeing on top here. This will replace the flow rate from here wherever you turn on a gas saver mode. So what, what do I mean by that is if you uh, take the total flow rate when the gas saver is on, what does mean is the septum flow rate is still three. We don't change this one at all. The column flow rate is still five. We don't change it at all, right? So three and five are constant, okay? And right now the split flow, we become the gas flow, uh, gas saver flow. And that is 20 right now that we're setting up over here. So that 20. So basically 3, 20 and 5, that is 28. So what do I mean by that is whenever you turn on a gas server mode, you get 28. And if you don't turn on a gas server mode, you, you need to consume 508. So that is a huge, huge saving from 508 to 28, right? So that's the, the basic idea why gas server mode is so good in this case, especially when it's come to helium, which is a lot more expensive, right? right? Okay. Uh, all right, so let me show you uh, a little bit more uh, detail in this. Uh, why so gas saver mode is so like a cooling factor right now, right? Okay, so again, uh, I have two different graphs, the one on top and the one on the bottom over here. The one on top is the gas saver mode deactivated or you turn off the gas saver mode. And the bottom one is where we turn on the gas saver mode, right? So if you if you don't turn on the gas saver mode, if gas saver mode is off, uh, the green light over here is a septum flow. You always consume three mil per minute from beginning of the run until the end of the run, or even when the EC is sitting idle. When it's not running at all, you still need to consume about three mil per minute of uh, septum and five mil per minute of the column flow rate, which is constant from uh, when the EC is sitting idle until when you finish your run. So that's this uh, three and five are, are fixed, right? You can't change these two. Right. Okay, so when it comes to a split flow, uh, if you don't turn on the gas and what you will be consuming 500 mil per minute again. So that's in total, that would be 508 mil per minute. And the total consumption, let's say, let's assume your analysis will finish within 14 minutes. So that would be 14 times 508, that equivalent to about 7,000 uh, mil per minute for 14 minutes, right? So if I, if I perform a quick calculation for you guys, if you purchase a, not a typical cylinder of helium, you see that will be filled to about 150, 200 bars, but let, let's make it 200 bars over here. And if you buy the big cylinder, that's about 47 liter. All right, so if you buy that 70, uh, 47 liter with 200 bar, and the flow rate you are going to consume is 7,000 mil per minute like this, that cylinder will last you for about 22 hours. All right. And 22 hours is basically, uh, if you are running in 14 minutes, even if you don't run, and you see for it from this, from the idle until uh, before you start the GC over here, you are also consuming the same flow rate over here. So even if you don't run the GC, one cylinder will last you properly for one day. So even you do nothing, you may want to spend a couple of hundred dollars just to buy. Uh, one cylinder of helium, so that's crazy, right? So especially for this case, it's consuming huge, huge amount of flow right over here. So that's, this is very extreme example, but I want you to understand why gas saver is so good in this case, right? So uh, again, just to summarize, uh, summarize this uh, crap, one cylinder of helium will last you for 22 hours if you are using this setup, right? So what's, what if you turn on the gas saver mode and the option the gas saver mode is turned on at two minutes for 20 mil per minute. So what happens is that, uh, again, the column flow rate will be uh, the, the orange dotted line over here. There is still five mil per minute, no change, and no change to the septum flow rate at three mil per minute also. But when it's come to the split flow, you will have, before the GC starts, it will consume only 20 mil per minute based on the flow rate from here, right? only 20 mil per minute. And when the GC starts, it will jump up to 500 mil per minute. And then we will, it will hold on at 500 mil per minute for two minutes, because you said over here two minutes. And then it will jump back down to 
uh, 20 millimeters. The process to jump from 20 to 50 will take probably a couple of seconds, but uh, it's very, very quick. So you don't have to worry about how long you to jump from 20 to 50 to 500 or 500 back to 20. That's probably about one to two seconds. That's really not uh, that long at all. Okay, but when, when it comes to the calculation of the flow rate, uh, that let's say within 40 minutes that you are running the GC uh, over here, that would be two, for two minutes, you will be consuming 508, here 500 plus three and five over here, so that 508 mil per minute. And the remaining 12 minutes, you will be consuming only 28. 20 plus three plus five, that's uh, 28. So in total, that will be 1,352 mil per minute, all right, uh, compared to seven, thousand mil minute. This is a huge, huge saving, right? Okay, so let me make the calculation one more time with the uh, two red bar and 47 liter of uh, helium cylinder. So that will basically last you for 115 hours, right? So that is almost five times more than what you're using away. So instead of buying one cylinder every day, you can buy a new cylinder for every five days. So that's, that's great, right? That's much, much better, right? But this calculation is uh, applicable only when you run the GC for 40 minutes like this. So even if you don't run the GC, the total flow rate uh, is only 20 over here plus three and five. So that's only 28 mil per minute. So basically, here five times more over here, I'm showing you is basically if you run the GC for, for five days constantly without stopping the GC. But if you stop the GC in between, Let's say the night time you don't work in the office or you in, in the lab, the GC is in this idle mode that will consume only 28 minutes. So the one cylinder of helium will last you even much, much longer, right? So I would say at least 10 times or 20 times over here compared to like one day on top here. So, so if, you, if you see the two different scenarios over here, uh, if, you, if you don't turn on gas ever mode, one cylinder of helium will last you for probably one day. And if you turn on a gas remote with this extreme example, one cylinder will last you for at least five days or probably up to one month if you don't run the GC or something like that, right? So this is a huge benefit of having the gas remote on, right? So this, this will answer the question, why is gas remote? Why is it so good in this case, right? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this first information about gas mode and let me know in the comment if you have any questions. In the next video, I'll be covering the couple of questions that we mentioned from the beginning of this uh, video. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and let me know if you have any questions. Again, thank you for watching and this is Learning by Doing with Peter Kron. Thank you very much and see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.